Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, April 13th, 2016, and we are here for an oral history interview with Robinson Program Professor Dr. Spencer Crew. My name is Emily Curley, and Bob Fay is assisting. We will be conducting this interview on behalf of the George Mason University Oral History Program. Our interview is taking place in the seminar room in the Special Collections Research Center at Fenwick Library. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Okay. So to begin, um, when did you join George Mason University as a Robinson professor? When? When. When. I came here in January of 2008. Okay. I had been working in Cincinnati at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center and was looking to come back to this area and mm -hmm. was fortunate enough to get a position here. Right. Okay. So uh, what had you heard about George Mason University and or the Robinson Professor Program before you actually got here? Okay. I didn't know a lot about the Robinson Program. I did know a lot about George Mason. I'd worked in Washington for 20 years from the early 80s until 2000. So I sort of heard about it and watched it begin to evolve and grow and become more and more important. I also knew several of the faculty members here, so I was aware of especially the quality of the history department and things that uh, 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 Roy Roisenzweig was doing with the mm -hmm. uh, History Media Organization. So I knew about the university, I knew about its growing size, its growing importance, and uh, was interested in seeing what was going on. Sure. Um, can you tell us what professors that you had kind of, um, Robinson professors that you had come in contact with before you joined the faculty here? I actually had not had much contact with the Robinson professors at all. I knew uh, Roger Wilkins, certainly. Mm -hmm. And we may have met once or twice, but uh, had not had a chance to really meet them prior to my arrival. Right. Okay. Uh, so can you uh, tell us a little bit about where you've been previously employed and your, your job titles at those positions? Yes. Well, I started my career uh, as a teacher at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I was there for almost uh, three years, and I was uh, in a, a joint appointment in the uh, history and the African American Studies program. From there, I then went to work at the Smithsonian at the National Museum of American History and was there for 20 years. and had a variety of positions there, ranging from historian to archivist to uh, curator, and then I was the head of a division there, and then I became the um, deputy director, and then became the director in 1994, and did that until 2001. 2001, I left there to go to a new organization that was just beginning to um, come into existence in Cincinnati called the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. I was intrigued by their focus on the Underground Railroad, their emphasis on understanding how people can make a difference in the world and how commitment can create change in the society in a positive kind of way. So I was there for six years. I was the um, director and president uh, of the, that place. And then I wanted to come back east and uh, began uh, talking to some of the different universities here and was able to contact the provost, uh, Peter Stearns, who we had a good conversation. He invited me to come in for an interview. I had an interview, had a chance to meet some of the other Robinson professors and was offered the position and was excited to come here and to be a part of it. Good. Okay. So did you find that it was difficult to transition from um, working at the National Museum of American History at the Smithsonian and the Underground Railroad Center in Cincinnati yeah. to teaching at George Mason University? And did you face any challenges? Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't a hard <laughs> transition because one of the things I'd always done, even throughout the entire time, is I've given a lot of public presentations, a lot of talks. <laughs> and uh, especially when I was at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, I started doing more and more research on uh, and, ab abolition and mm -hmm. Underground Railroad. And so I had a repertoire of research and of things I had written uh, previous to that. And also I had taught for quite right. several years. I taught for three years at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I went to graduate school at Rutgers University, and mm -hmm. part of the time that I was a graduate student there, for about three or four years, I actually ran my own classes. Okay. So I had about seven or eight years of teaching experience to draw upon when I came here. So the mm -hmm. idea of teaching wasn't so much of a challenge. What was interesting, though, was seeing how differently the style of teaching had changed since I'd done it 20 years previously and sure. had begun to <clears> teach uh, here. One of the things I realized is that media, um, PowerPoint, um, the old traditional way of doing things was where you'd stand in front of the class and you'd lecture for 50 minutes or 75 minutes and then they'd all leave, didn't work as well. 
that in fact you had to do a, a wider variety of techniques in the classroom in order to keep the students engaged. I think the more modern students are used to media, they're used to smartphones, they're used to videos. Mm -hmm. So they're used to things uh, moving more quickly and um, more diversely. So my adjustment was beginning to rethink my teaching style right. and how I could find a way of sharing information with the students, keeping them engaged and interested in the topic of history, which I love so much, and I wanted to share that same love of history with them. And so that's been the adjustment uh, since I've been here. Uh, it's been fun to do that, and mm -hmm. it's, it's good to have to um, challenge yourself. Sure. And I've enjoyed that challenge. I could just tip in. So, so um, let's say you're, you, you know, you're, you're teaching a class now. What types right. of um, what types of nuts and bolts do you now bring to your course for students who are probably right. 17, 18, 19 years old? Uh, well, I, I think my idea, I think the most interesting thing I learned, because we have all these um, videos and emails and other things at George Mason where they offer you tips and ideas and things to think about. And uh, I think the idea of the flipped classroom is the, uh, is the concept that sort of caught me, caught my eye. And my interest now is not so much in lecturing. I was telling a colleague of mine, now if I lecture, it's no more than 10 or 15 minutes in a class. And the rest of it is uh, having a conversation with the students. So that um, the tip that I got was that you don't have to control the information. The students can control the information. What you want to do is guide their understanding of it. So in most of my classes now, I don't lecture very much. Instead, the idea is that when I get some of the students to do a short presentation on the reading, so part of what happens is I can hear what is of importance to them, what things sort of um, caught their attention, and then how we might be able to in, uh, in, in, enlarge that conversation. So I really push towards having sort of more engaging conversations that allow them to bring their ideas forward. And I've also learned that the more you can connect it to their lives, the more engaged they will, they will stay. So we try to do the history, but then we try to say, well, how does it fit in today's world? How might you think of this? How do you look at the people in that pastime and how they're doing things? And how are their standards, their principles, their morals different or the similar to the ones we have today? So the real idea, I think, is to get them thinking about the past, not as this distant foreign place, but as a place of real people who are struggling with similar kind of issues and trying to make decisions, but based on a different sort of worldview. And how does their worldview differ from the worldview of those students? And right. that way they can begin to see it as more lively and more important in terms of their own learning, mm -hmm. hopefully. 